Magandang araw, oras na para sa pinakabagong balita sa lagay ng panahon at sa mundo ng science and technology. Ako po si Jel Miranda and we welcome you to DOS TV, Science for the People. Alamin ang iba pang pag-aaral na tinalakay sa nakaraang 39th Annual Scientific Meeting ng National Academy of Science and Technology Philippines kasama ang ilan sa ating mga expert sa fisheries and aquatic sector. Maya-maya lamang, kaya tutok lang. Nagbabalik po ang DOS TV Science for the People. And to discuss to us about the environmental atrocities in the West Philippine Sea, the science behind conservation recourse. Joining us is marine biologist and professor from the Old Dominion University, Dr. Kent Carpenter. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Magandang umaga. Magandang umaga. <laughs> o, oh, di ba? Tatagalog kayo, sir. Konte. <laughs> okay. Pag-usapan natin, let us talk about um, the importance of coral reefs. But, uh, totoo ba, sir, na most of the coral reefs in the world are in trouble? Uh, yes, that is true. And that's mm -hmm. primarily because of the overarching effects of climate change. Mm -hmm. So, uh, corals in the world have uh, many reasons to be wor yes. worried, if mm -hmm. you will, because of uh, many different stressors. Mm -hmm. So there are immediate stressors, things that happen like pollution close by to coral reefs or sedimentation coming from the land and smothering mm -hmm. the coral reefs. Um, and uh, there's also the overarching problem of climate change, okay. which um, stresses coral reefs mm -hmm. because when sea uh, surface temperatures rise, the corals become stressed and they lose their algae inside their mm -hmm. bodies. Mm -hmm. So the corals are a very fragile ecosystem because they depend on the symbiosis, the living mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. of both a plant and an animal. So when sea surface temperatures rise, the algae inside the corals uh, are expelled. And yes. this is what's called a bleaching mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. And because of that, because of climate change, the coral reefs of the, of the world are in fact um, uh, endangered. Mm -hmm. So uh, aside from climate change, uh, what are some factors or other factors that can affect the corals? Well, um, for example, in the Philippines, there's destructive fishing methods. Okay. So one type of destructive fishing method, as you can imagine, is dynamite fishing. Mm -hmm. Until so, now. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's getting much better, but, mm -hmm. but I think there are still parts where dynamite fishing occurs. And when that occurs in, uh, near a coral reef, it, it, it destroys mm -hmm. the coral. Coral themselves are a fairly fragile uh, okay. animal that can mm -hmm. break apart because of, of dynamite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other thing that can occur in the Philippines is overfishing, and that's something that still is a big problem. Mm -hmm. When you overfish a coral reef, you take out the fish, and yeah. many of those fish are actually important for the survival of the coral reef mm -hmm. because they eat the algae that are on the reef. Mm -hmm. And if the algae are not eaten, then the, uh, then the algae becomes too large and it also ends up smothering the corals. Mm -hmm. So
So overfishing, uh, um, dynamite fishing uh, are two examples of what can happen to reefs mm -hmm. in the Philippines. So what are the measures to rehabilitate those damaged corals? Well, <clears throat> the best thing is to leave them alone. And the best way to do mm -hmm. that probably is by uh, having very well-managed marine protected areas. So mm -hmm. if you have a well-managed marine protected area where the fish are allowed to come back, where the corals themselves are allowed to recuperate, um, then you can get quite vibrant um, coral reef communities in marine protected areas. Mm -hmm. And there's very good examples of that in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, for example, Apo Reef yeah. in, in uh, High near High biodiversity. Yes, yes, yes. So this is one mm -hmm. example. Um, Dr. Angel Alcala mm -hmm. from Suleiman University created this uh, marine protected area many years ago. And it's one of the most beautiful places yeah. in the world to mm -hmm. go to. Mm -hmm. So a lot of factors that really stressing these coral reefs. But what is the implication or what are the implications of those damaged corals to the marine Biodiversity. Well, uh, it, coral reefs are very important for many reasons. Number one, corals help to protect the yes. shoreline. Mm -hmm. So if there's a typhoon, a bagyo, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. if you don't have a good uh, buffer for mm -hmm. those waves, then the land itself can get washed mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. The coral reefs are very productive ecosystems, some of the most productive ecosystems in the world. And because of this, they have lots of fish. And Filipinos love fish, as you of well course. know. <laughs> yeah. So think of the grouper, mm -hmm. the dalagang buke. <laughs> what uh, is your favorite food? Uh, fish. Uh, dalagang buke. Dalagang like, yes, I like dalagang buke. What buke. about bangus and tilapia? Bangus tilapia. I like, yeah. Tilapia, well, not, not so much. But, <laughs> but, okay. Yeah. <laughs> is it true that the damaged coral reef can affect the uh, neighboring uh, coral reef? Yes, so if you damage the reef in one area, then you restrict the amount of recruits that can potentially help to replenish another area. Mm -hmm. So destruction in one area um, may, means that you restrict the ability for other reefs mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. recuperate, okay. if you will, or mm -hmm. to recruit fish that can be used uh, for food. Okay, uh, how, well, how about um, the coral triangle? Can you tell us what is coral triangle? Well, the Coral Triangle is the most uh, biodiverse marine realm in the world. So it includes uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, yeah. mm -hmm. Brunei, uh, uh, Timor-Leste, uh, the yes. Solomon Islands, mm -hmm. uh, Papua New Guinea, and the Philippines, of course. The Philippines is at the apex of the Coral Triangle. It's the, far the farthest north okay. of the Coral Triangle. And it's sort of like the Amazon River Basin of the marine world. Mm -hmm. It's an area that has the most number of marine species, okay. corals and fish. So the Philippines has the higher concentration of the species? Yes. Um, the, the Philippines is the most special part okay. of the oh, coral okay. triangle mm -hmm. because you have the highest concentration mm -hmm. of fishes and mm -hmm. other marine organisms per unit area of any place in the Coral Triangle, and mm -hmm. that means that you have the highest concentration of fish of any place in the world. Mm -hmm. So this is something that all Filipinos should be very proud of, is the fact that you have a natural heritage here that really deserves to be, uh, to be uh, preserved. Mm -hmm. One of the top news today is the damage of the Great Barrier Reef. What can you say about it? Well, this is a very unfortunate uh, event. So. Um, in many parts of the world, because of raised sea surface temperatures, again, climate change, uh, about uh, uh, in the late 90s, mm -hmm. uh, the Western Indian Ocean was impacted very, very heavily by um, a bleaching events. Mm -hmm. And this occurs and destroyed huge areas uh, in the Western Indian Ocean. Other areas of the world are starting to be affected by the sea surface temperature ra uh, uh, mm -hmm. rise. And uh, the right now, it is unfortunately the, 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 the turn of the Great Barrier Reef to bear the brunt mm -hmm. of this destructive uh, uh, occurrence. Um, so much of the Great Barrier Reef is, is experiencing uh, bleaching events mm -hmm. where the coral reefs are dying. Um, but there are other areas which are still um, not totally affected yet. So mm -hmm. there's, um, there's hope. Mm -hmm. So we should try to hope uh, that we can stop climate change in order for the reefs that have been destroyed um, to come back. And fortunately, there are parts of the Great Barrier Reef that mm -hmm. are still surviving, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, um, not as much as we would like. But, but is there any uh, way uh, 
easiest way maybe to develop or to, to recover this uh, damaged coral? Well, that's a very tough question because what, what the world needs to do is it needs to stop um, using fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. It needs to stop um, all of the uh, mm -hmm. things that are taking place that cause um, mm -hmm. the sea surface temperatures to rise, the, the greenhouse uh, gas effect, which is caused by burning fossil fuels for engines. Um, and unfortunately, um, the oceans have a, 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 what you would call a double whammy, a bad, two bad things uh -huh. happening. Not only are the sea surface temperatures rising, but the carbon dioxide dissolves into the marine environment and causes the pH to change. It's a, something that is referred to as ocean, ocean acidification. Uh -huh. And um, corals cannot make uh, their skeleton if the pH is too low, mm -hmm. if it's too mm -hmm. acid. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the corals have not only the problem of, of temperature, mm -hmm. but they also have this additional problem of um, having being stressed because of uh, the pH becoming lower. Mm -hmm. Can reef recover the corals? Yes, coral reefs can recover through protection, through um, uh, you know stopping climate change. Okay. Uh, through we we know that many marine protected areas are more resilient. Yeah. So by investing in uh, saving corals, then uh, the resilience. Um, will hopefully um, overcome some of these uh, bad global events. Mm -hmm. But so there are possibilities that the Philippines be affected by the issue of the Great Barrier Reef. Yes, it's a it's a distinct possibility. The Philippines uh, has had coral bleaching, so mm -hmm. there have been areas of, of extensive coral bleaching, uh, maybe not as much as the Western Indian Ocean or the Great Barrier Reef. Um, I think that uh, the Philippines is fortunate because um, you're already in a very warm area. So the corals maybe are a little more adapted to um, warm temperatures, mm -hmm. more so than the Great Barrier Reef or other places in the Western Indian Ocean. Um, the science behind that is very uncertain. Mm -hmm. um, I hope uh, that the Philippines is more resilient and will continue to um, uh, not have as much bleaching events as other places. Um, but my guess is, unless we um, really do something about climate change, that the Philippines will be um, strongly affected in the future. Mm -hmm. As an individual, how can I help? Or what will I do to protect our marine biodiversity? Well, anything dealing with conservation helps. So as, as individuals, you can, um, you can stop um, uh, throwing trash into the yes. water because <laughs> that, that in itself uh, stresses, stresses yeah. the corals, mm -hmm. okay? So there are many simple things that Filipinos can do to um, help to reduce their impact. Um, you know, try to encourage your government to help re reduce climate change. Um, try not to uh, pollute yourself. Try to encourage your friends uh, to do uh, uh, eco-friendly sort of practices. Mm -hmm. Everybody can, can um, participate. Everybody can contribute to conservation. Mm -hmm. That's true. We all have the responsibilities to take care of our environment. Any final words to our televiewers? Um, no, I think it's very important that Filipinos um, understand that, that um, you have a very, very special marine environment here. And it's uh, very important, I think, to be proud of your marine environment, uh, to be engaged in marine conservation effort, and to support um, your government and, and non-governmental organizations in, in the conservation of marine resources. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Ken Carpenter. We hope that the Philippine marine biodiversity, especially our coral reefs, will continue to be saved and rehabilitated through the help of science and technology, and of course, through the cooperation of every Filipino.
ating ngayon, Academy Shan, Mr. Rodel Lasco. Good morning, sir. Good morning, girls. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Kwento niyo sa amin, discuss niyo ng konti, yung inyong topic dito sa NASA hmm. Scientific Meeting. Alam mo, girls, uh, mm -hmm. isang uh, issue ngayon itong sa Laguna Lake ano? mm -hmm. at yung uh, pakingisda, anong gagawin natin in terms of yung fishing, how can we sustain, paano magiging tuloy-tuloy yung pakingisda. At uh, meron pa nga naging issue, kailangan ba tanggalin, for example, uh -oh. yung mga fish cages niya, fish pens. Uh, uh, pero dito sa ating pinakita, napakahalaga na malaman natin na itong lake o lawa ay uh, napaka-importanting source ng protein mm -hmm. para sa ating mga kababayan. Uh, in fact, it's uh, the major source ano, na pinanggagalingan ng isda. And so, uh, mahalaga na magtuloy-tuloy ang production nito. At ayon naman sa siyensya, pinakita natin doon sa ating pag-aaral na meron naman lugar talaga no, na patuloy na mag-produce ng isda itong lawa. Ang mm -hmm. mahalaga lang dito ay eh, babalanse yung pangangailangan ng mga maliliit na mga isda at uh, ganun din naman yung mga malalaki o mga large operators. So, hindi naman pwedeng puro large operators uh, ang lamang. Uh, sana nga, mas mapagbigyan natin yung mga mas maliliit na uh -huh. mga isda. At ito ang gusto natin mangyari. Mm -hmm. Sana mabigyan ng pagkakataon, hindi ba, sir? Yes. Oh, yes. Pero sa ngayon, kamusta ang estado ng Laguna Lake? Sa ngayon, uh, well, ito nakakabahala mm -hmm. yung mga indicators. Nagpapakitang talagang uh, nagiging madumi o polluted oh. yung lawa. And so, mahalaga na maging sustainable. No? Itong uh, production nga ng isda, for example. Uh, hindi lang yan, napakaraming mga pollutants o mga dumi na nanggagaling sa kapaligiran na parang nagiging, uh, kumbaga, parang sahod, nasa sahod uh -huh. itong lawa, yung lahat ng mga pollution na ito. E, yan ang naming problema ng lawa. Mm -hmm. So, ano ginagawa nating measures o hakbang para at least maiwasan o at least may makasurvive pa yung ganitong sistema o sitwasyon? Ang isang napakahalaga dito, uh, makontrol natin yung pinanggagalingan ng tinatawag na mga pollution. Yes. Uh, eh ito, nanggagaling ito sa mismong mga bahay, maraming kasi ng bahay, mm -hmm. around, around, around mm -hmm. the lake. So, mahalaga na magkaroon ng mga sewage or yung treatment facility. Itong mm -hmm. mga bayan, napakaraming bayan yan, malalaki ang mga bayan na yan. So, nag, uh, malaking contribution nila eh, sa pollution base dun sa pag-aaral. Hindi lang yan, yung mga, siyempre, mga industries, mm -hmm. nag-focus uh, din sila ng uh, mga dumi o wastes na pumupunta ito sa lawa. Mm -hmm. So, mahalagang ma-address natin yan on the side of uh, pollution. Uh, of course, doon naman sa mga sa lawa mismo, mahalaga rin na matulungan natin yung mga mangingisda para nga magkaroon sila ng access doon sa lawa para makapagpatuloy uh, silang uh, makapagproduce uh, ng uh, isda. Mm -hmm. Anong epekto ng climate change? Pagdating naman sa climate change, uh, maaaring uh, inaasahan, magbabago una sa lahat, ang temperatura mas iinit. Hindi lang yan, baka yung ulan lumakas o mga bagyo lumakas. Alam naman natin, pag uh, malakas ang bagyo, itong mga fish pens, fish cages, pwede masira yan. Gaya nangyari noon, kung maalala mo ba, mm -hmm. na I think it was sometime 1990s, na halos nasira lahat ng mga fish pen dahil sa malakas ng bagyo. So, malaki yung epekto nito in terms of yung damage. Hindi lang yan, yung mga isda natin, eh, sensitive din yan sa init ng, init ng, ng lawa mismo. So, hindi natin alam kung ano mangyayari pag uminit. Uh, even yung temperatura, baka maapektuhan din yung kanilang uh, paglago, paglaki. Pero wala pa tayo paraming mm -hmm. mga studies tungkol dyan. So due to weather disturbances mm -hmm. and climate change, iba't ibang factor eh, na maaaring yes. makasira dun sa ating Laguna Lake. Ano yun yung mga ginagawa natin, sir, ng uh, method or development pagdating dito? Ang isang ginagawa ngayon ng LDA, uh, GELS, kumunusulta sila sa mga eksperto, kasama natin ng NASD, mm -hmm. National mm -hmm. Academy of Science and Technology, nag-create sila ng isang panel ng mga eksperto tungkol sa lawa, sa fish, and etc. At uh, may mga mahalagang rekomendasyon ito. For example, uh, ilimit na lamang yung pwedeng pangisdaan Oo. sa 9,000 more or less hectares, 9,200 hectares, out of 90,000 ng buong okay. lawa. Oo. So, in other words, kailangan i-restrict natin sa around 10% lamang mm -hmm. ng lawa ang pwedeng mangisda. Mm -hmm. So, yun yung isang mahalagang rekomendasyon na related sa fisheries o pangingisda. Mm. Pagdating sa fish kills? Well, uh, related sa pollution. Gaya mm -hmm. ng alam natin, pag uh, tumaas yung sinatawag ng mga algae mm -hmm. uh, population dahil masyadong mataba o maraming uh, pollutants sa lawa, pag sumobre yung mga algae niyan, inaagaw nila yung oxygen. Sa halip na yung isda ay makagamit ng oxygen, sila ang gumagamit. Pag nawala yung oxygen, patay din yung isda nasa lawa. So, Nagkakahawaan ba yun, sir? Halimbawa, merong area na marami isdang namatay, may tendency na mahawa yung mga kalapit na kung cages. Kung marami ring algae doon sa lugar na yun, kasi pag 
inabsorb ng algae yung mga oxygen na yun, uh, mawawala din yung oh. mga katabing mga, uh, yung, well, yung area na maraming algae kasi ang bilis kumalat ng algae. Mm-hmm. Base sa inyong discussion ngayon dito sa NAS, a scientific meeting, ano-ano pa yung mga objectives na ibinahagi ninyo doon sa ating mga delegates? Atin ding in-emphasize dito na mahalaga na magtulungan yung nasa lawa, pati yung mga lupa o watershed na nakapalibot sa lawa. Okay. Kasi hindi lang naman yung lawa ang mahalaga, ang pangalagaan natin, yung kasing mga pollution nang gagaling doon sa mga lupa o watersheds na nakapalibot sa lawa. 22 watersheds yan. Ang pinakamalaki yung Marikina Watershed. Mm-hmm. Sumunod yung Pagsanghan River Watershed. Yes. So, maraming mga pollution din ang gagaling eh, sa, mga wa- sa mga lupa nga na nakapalibot. Mm-hmm. So, kailangan magtulungan. Hindi lang yung mga nasa lawa, pati yung mga nakatira sa nakapalibot sa lawa, kailangan tumulong din para ating mailigtas yung lawa sa yun nga, yung pagka, pagkasira. Mm-hmm. Pagdating sa science and technology, ano-ano yung mga innovation, sir, na pwede natin i-apply sa pangangalaga ng Laguna Lake? That, that whole uh, issue ng uh, carry capacity, okay. yung bang gano, uh, karami ang pwede nating, uh, 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 kunwari mga fish cages o fish pens na ilagay, uh, like 9,000 hectares. Uh, in a way, it's based on some scientific ano, ano, investigation. But, pero gusto pa natin mas pag-aralan pa eh. Kasi alam mo, chill school lang pa rin eh. No? Uh-huh. Kahit na may alam na tayo, ang katotohanan eh, mas kailangan pa nating malaman talaga. Kulang pa rin yung ating mga scientific monitoring. At uh, sana nga ito yung mas maisagawa pa natin para lalo nating matulungan ang LLDA mm-hmm. na siyang nangangalaga nga at nangangasiwa dito sa Laguna Lake. Although marami naman ang research and development na naisagawa yes, sa... Yes, marami na rin naman. Oh. Nagagamit natin yan. Oh. In fact, ngayon tuloy-tuloy ang paggamit yan. Kagaya nga nung water quality, sinabi ko kanina, yes. yung nitrogen oh. content, phosphorus mm-hmm. content, yung uh, pag-alat mm-hmm. ng laway, yung salilid na tinatawag. Lahat yan, eh, may mga scientific investigation naman. Pero mahalaga kasi long term tuloy-tuloy, hindi pwede yung meron ngayon, Tama. as well next year, wala na naman. Para yung data natin, pang matagalan din. Mm-hmm. At sana nga, no, maparami pa yung mga isda. Dahil pag nawala isda, sigurado wala tayo tayong makakain, hindi ba sir? Totoo yan. Totoo yan yes. Any final words niya sir <coughs> sa ating mga tagapanood at nasa inyong pagkakataon? Well, ini-encourage natin ang ating mga kababayan, lalo na yung mga nakatira sa uh, palibot ng lawa at umaasa sa lawa sa Laguna, Lake, na magtulungan tayo ano, para pangalagaan ng lawa. Kung tayo nakatira sa palibot, maging uh, conscious tayo sa ating waste uh, management, waste disposal. Kung umaasa naman mismo sa lawa, maging uh, maganda sana yung ating um, pag, uh, mga, mga practices o mga gawain. At ingatan natin na huwag tayong makadumi pa lalo uh, sa lawa. Thank you so much. Thank you, And yes. congratulations po. Yes. Good luck. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat. Nakasama po natin Academician Dr. Rodel Nasco. Manatili kayo nakatutok, magbabalik pa rin ang GOS TV Science for the People. Thank you, Ms. Jel. Good morning sa iyo. Good morning din sa mga viewers natin ng DOS TV. Sa ngayon po, base sa ating latest Himawari animation, wala naman po tayong bagyo or low pressure area na namamataan sa loob or paligid ng ating area of responsibility. At nagbabalik po ang kumpul ng kaulapan na dulot ng Intertropical Convergence Zone or ITCZ sa malaking bahagi ng ating bansa. Silipin muna natin ang magiging taya ng panahon dito sa Luzon. Asahan po sa may Southern Luzon, particularly Mimaropa area, ngayon din ang Aurora and Quezon provinces, mga karanas ng maulap na kalangitan dahil sa ITCC at sasamahan pa ito ng light to moderate rains and thunderstorms. For Metro Manila and the rest of Luzon, asahan naman ang bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap na kalangitan sa buong araw, mataas pa rin ang tsansa ng mga isolated rain showers or thunderstorms, pagsapit ng hapon hanggang gabi. Sa mga kababayan po natin sa Visayas, magdala na po ng payong dahil inaasahan ang epekto ng ITCC sa inyong lugar. Maulap na kalangitan na may kasamang mahina hanggang katamtamang mga pagulan at pagkidlat pagkulog ang inyong mararanasan. Gayun din po sa ating mga kababayan sa Mindanao, asahan din ang makulimlim na panahon. Meron din mga pagulan na light to moderate at asahan din ang mga pulupulong pagulan at mga pagkidlat pagkulog dahil po sa Intertropical Convergence Zone. Silipin naman natin ang magiging taya ng panahon sa susunod pa na tatlong araw sa ilang key metros and city ng ating bansa. 
Dito po sa Metro Manila, asahan pa rin ang bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap na kalangitan hanggang bukas at meron din mga isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. At ang temperature natin maring umakyat sa 33 degrees Celsius. Pagsapit po buka sa Thursday, which is uh, makalawa, ay mga karanas naman po na maulap na kalangitan dahil sa ITCG at sasamahan din ito ng mga pagulan. At ang temperature natin maring tumaas lamang sa 32 degrees Celsius. At pagsapit po ng Friday, ma maaring maging maganda na muli ang panahon sa ating lugar dito sa Metro Manila. Sa mga kababayan po natin sa Baguio City, asahan naman ang bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap na kalangitan hanggang sa araw ng Biyernes. Meron pa rin po mga panandaliang pagulan na mararanasan, lalo na po sa hapon hanggang gabi. Range of temperature natin ay from 16 hanggang 25 degrees Celsius. Sa atong mga kaisonan din na sa Metro Cebu, asahan po bukas, Maula pa rin na kalangitan at meron din mga pagulan at pagkidlat pagkulog dulot ng ITCC. Temperature natin 25 hanggang 31 degrees Celsius. Pero pagsapit po ng Thursday and Friday, magiging maganda muli ang panahon at aasahan ng temperature from 25 hanggang 32 degrees Celsius. Panghuli sa ating mga kababayan dito sa Metro Davao, katulad po sa Metro Cebu, maulap din po hanggang bukas dahil sa Intertropical Convergence Zone. At pagsapit naman ng Thursday and Friday ay magiging maganda muli ang panahon. Meron pa rin mga chance na mga panandali ang buhos ng ulan. Range of temperature natin from 25 hanggang 33 degrees Celsius. Sa lagay naman po ng ating karagatan, wala naman tayong gale warning or banta ng matataas na alon. Pero minsan po dito sa western section of Luzon at maging sa extreme northern Luzon, moderate, occasionally strong po na hangin at minsan po matataas din na alon. Pero in general po ay pwede-pwede pa rin maglayag ang ating mga kababayan. Si Haring Araw po ay lulubog 6.29 ng gabi at muli itong sisikat bukas 5.36 naman ng umaga. Yan muna latest mula dito sa Weather Forecasting Center ng DOST Pagasa. Ako po si Benison Estarehan na nagsasabing sa anumang panahon, pag-asa ang magandang solusyon. Happy Tuesday po! DOS TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated. Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSM BFI Building, 318 Santon Road, West Crame, San Juan City. CITAV, the world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news, views, and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.citev.net. Jel Miranda would like to thank Dita Sandico, Atrium Hotel, managed by Icon Hotel. And that's it for today. For more information, just log on to www.dostv.ph and visit our social media accounts. Abangan din ang update sa lagay ng panahon mula sa DOST Pag-asa tuwing alas 5 ng umaga at alas 5 ng hapon. Always remember, in progress, science is the key. Kaya sabay-sabay tayo makiisa at gamitin ang siyensya. Kami ang DOS-TV, the program that delivers science for the people.